Hello, I'm Bobby Galuba with ubitech.com and welcome to my 19th video recorded on Saturday, August 20th, 2016. In this video, I'm going to show you how I fix my 18 inch Craftsman reel mower. Now, the problem with my mower is that the handle brace right here broke, and so I've got to replace it with a new handle brace. And this is the second time I've had to do this type of repair on uh, my mower here. Now, for those of you who haven't uh, seen a real mower before, all it is is a lawn mower that's powered by uh, you pushing it. So when you push it, the wheels turn on the ground, all right, and inside the wheel there's gears which turn another gear which push this reel of blades and those blades cut the grass okay and uh, you don't have to put any gas in it uh, you don't have to put any oil in it and the only maintenance you have to do is occasional repairs like I'm doing here and uh, every time you're done mowing what you want to do is you want to just put a thin coat of oil on the blades when you're done mowing to keep them from corroding and then just occasionally sharpen the blades as well so, but it gives you some good exercise and it uh, doesn't use any gas and it's pretty maintenance free. Now here's the owner's manual for the real mower and as you can see it's a Craftsman 18 inch push real mower and it's a model 486.37613 alright and just as some background information I purchased it uh, I believe in 2002 so it's about 14 years old and the only other repairs that I've had to make on it um, I've had to replace this plastic roller which rolls along the ground um, I've had to replace this once and I've also had to replace the uh, shaft right here that the roller rolls on and actually wore through at one point in fact it looks like it's getting kind of worn through here as well and this particular one I uh, this one is a stainless steel shaft that I put in there as a replacement the last time I had to replace it. So those are about the only things that I've ever really had to do to it as far as replacing parts. Um, again, I had to uh, replace one of these uh, handle brackets uh, one other time, um, but the only other parts that I've had to replace were the plastic roller and the shaft for the plastic roller. Now, I ordered the part from SearsPartsDirect.com and as you can see on the packing slip, uh, as I mentioned, the part description is a handle brace. The part number is 3603-43 and you can see that on the part as well, 3603-43 and the price was $14.78. It's not uh, printed on the packing slip here, but I just wrote it down. Okay, so now let's go through the tools and supplies that I think I'll probably need in order to do the repair. It's a fairly simple repair, so I don't think I'll need much, but here are the things that uh, I'd like to have uh, ahead of time. Uh, the first would be a uh, rag, so that I can clean off my hands or any dirty parts. The next is a pair of uh, gloves, so that I uh, reduce the chances of cutting up my hands and it also gives you a better grip on uh, the parts and uh, your tools as well. In fact, these uh, gloves are coated uh, with rubber on the palm side and on the back it's just cloth. So these are uh, pretty tough and they also give you a, uh, a fairly good grip. Okay, and the next thing I always wear, no matter what repairs I'm doing, um, are my safety glasses. You never want to do any repairs uh, without these on your head. Okay, so even if you think it's a simple repair, don't take the chance. Always, always, always wear your safety glasses. Um, I was uh, cleaning off the battery terminals of my truck one time and I thought it was going to be a fairly easy repair, fairly simple and fairly safe and I didn't bother to wear my safety glasses, but boy was I sorry after that because uh, 
when I was scraping off the corrosion from the battery terminal, a little piece of corrosion flew right up into my eye, and luckily I was able to get it out easily. It didn't uh, injure me, but after that I never took any more chances, and I always uh, wear my safety glasses now whenever I'm doing a repair. Now as far as tools go, what I'm going to use is my Metrinch tool set. Now this tool set it will allow you to uh, work with both metric and standard nuts and bolts and screws okay so the same wrench like say for example this one here alright as you can see it says 14 millimeter and 9 sixteenths so this one wrench can work with both metric and standard uh, fat or bolts and nuts and screws okay so this is a really good set of tools um, they still sell them as far as I know and uh, here's the name Metrinch M-E-T-R-I-N-C-H and as you can see it has this lobed profile here and that's what allows it to work with both metric and uh, standard nuts bolts and screws okay <clears throat> and another advantage is that it can also be used to uh, easily remove nuts or bolts that are rounded off at the corners okay so as you can see here the little lobes they don't grab the very corners of the nut what they do is they grab more towards the middle of uh, the side of the nut okay so that allows you to get a good grip on nuts and bolts that have uh, had their heads rounded off okay so again this is a metrinch uh, and this is a uh, combination metrinch it's got the box end here and the open end here so I'll uh, use the tools from this tool set to help me fix my reel mower okay to remove the old handle brace what I want to first do is I want to remove this screw here and this screw here which will allow me to take this cover plate off okay and then once I'm done getting the cover plate off what I want to do is I want to uh, unscrew this nut from this bolt here and this nut and this nut from their corresponding bolts okay now from what I remember from the last time I had to do this repair these nuts uh, right here this one this one and this one are extremely difficult to get off uh, because of the fact that I think what they do at the factory is once they assemble them I believe they press uh, the nuts onto the bolts okay or actually they kind of just squeeze them so that they are less likely to come loose and that's what this little square imprint is on the side of the nut and as you can see uh, this one has it here as well so these may still be rather difficult to uh, unscrew from their bolts okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, I'll put a wrench on one side of the bolt and then I'll also put uh, probably uh, my ratchet with a socket on the other side okay so to remove the first screw for the cover plate actually both screws um, I'm going to use my let's see if we can get it to focus here I'm gonna use my 5 16 and 8 millimeter socket from my Metrinch set and um, it's uh, attached to my nut driver here okay so here's the nut driver and here's the socket on the end and the nut driver just has a square head right here and the socket has a square hole and the nut driver just uh, goes into that hole on the socket okay so I'm gonna put it on the screw here and I'll turn it counterclockwise um, and a good phrase you can remember is lefty loosey righty tighty and that applies uh, to most threaded fasteners uh, such as bolts, screws, and nuts. Okay, so I'm going to turn it counterclockwise or to the left.
Okay, so there you go. And uh, as you can probably see here, it's a self-tapping screw. Let me get it centered there. And it has a little drill kind of on the end that helps it to bite into the metal and start a hole. And uh, the threads are very sharp, or relatively sharp, so that, um, let me get it a little bit closer to the camera here. Uh, there you go. And those threads will help uh, cut into the metal and uh, cut their own uh, threads in the hole that it's going into. So it's considered a self-tapping screw. There you go. And again, you can see on the end, let me center it there, it has uh, the little teeth there to help cut the hole. And if you notice for this first screw that I removed, I forgot to wear my gloves, but now I have my gloves on, and I probably won't really need them. It's not uh, a dangerous repair, but it's always good to have them on. It uh, gives you some protection, and it uh, gives you a better grip as well. Okay, so I'm going to use the same socket that I used uh, to remove the sec or that I used to remove the first screw. I'm going to use the same socket on the second screw as well, and that's the five sixteenths or eight millimeter socket. Okay, and again, I'm going to turn it counterclockwise or lefty loosey. And so now I can remove the faceplate. Okay, so here's what the assembly looks like with the faceplate removed. There's the handles up towards the end there, and then uh, the broken handle brace right here. Uh, there's the screw hole for the second screw I removed, and here is uh, the screw hole for the first screw I removed. And as you can see, on the left side of the screw hole, is a little shiny piece and that is a broken piece of the screw uh, that I took out. And if you see here, the broken screw is on the top and the good screw, the second screw that I removed, the unbroken one is uh, on the bottom there and as you can see it's a little bit longer and you can get a better idea of what the little teeth look like that help to cut a hole when you're first inserting these screws. So I'm probably still going to use the old broken screw because it's only the tip that's broken off and it'll probably still work just fine. And to uh, avoid uh, losing the screws, what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and put them in this old mayonnaise jar, this plastic mayonnaise jar. And another good reason why you want to put these screws in a jar, um, you not only you don't want to lose them, but you also don't want to step on them if you're walking around barefoot because if these things are sticking up um, like this so there's one sticking up if somebody comes along and steps on that they're gonna get a nasty surprise so you want to take both of them and any of the other parts that you have and just stick them in the jar so that you don't step on them and you don't lose them now what I'm also going to do to make it a little easier for me to remove uh, these nuts right here from their bolts is I'm going to spray on some of this uh, greaseless lubricant that I have here and you can use any other type of uh, spray on lubricant that you have and so I'll just uh, sp spray it on to each nut and the threads and just let it work its way into the threads and so hopefully that'll kind of loosen them up and make it easier for me to remove them. And while I get my other tools, the uh, lubricant will uh, soak into the threads and just make it easier for them to be removed. Now to unscrew the three bolts, or the three nuts from the three bolts that hold the two handle braces together, uh, I'm going to use the following tools. First I have my 13 millimeter and one half inch combination mesh wrench. Okay, here's the opened end and here's the 
uh, clo or the box end right here, and I'm going to use the box end. All right. So again, it's the 13 millimeter and one half inch combination metrinch. Then uh, the next tool I'm going to use is my 3 8 inch drive ratchet wrench here. Okay. And the reason why it's called 3 8 inch drive is that the square right there is 3 8 of an inch. So uh, from here, number one to two is one inch, okay? And each one of these little tick marks is an eighth of an inch. So let's go one, or let's see here. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? So, and the width of this little square head right here is one, two, three tick marks. So it's a three eighths inch drive ratchet wrench. Okay. And I have my three eighths inch to one quarter inch adapter. Okay. So this little uh, adapter here has a hole that's three eighths of an inch wide. All right. And that goes on to this three eighths inch drive right here. And in order to get it to go on there, what I have to do, um, I have to press this little button right here. And what that does is it allows that little ball right there, as you can see it right in there, that little ball will uh, be depressed once I press that button. Let's go ahead and I'll press the button. And then that allows me to put the adapter on the ratchet wrench and then it won't come off, it won't fall off while you're using it, all right? And the adapter also has another little spring-loaded ball right here on this end, okay? And again, this one is a quarter of an inch wide. So if you go one, two, that's two eighths, which is equal to one quarter. So this is a one quarter inch drive right here on this end of the adapter. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, put my one quarter inch drive socket, which is one half inch and 13 millimeters in size. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just snap that onto the end of the adapter there. So here's my ratchet wrench, my uh, 3 8 inch drive ratchet wrench, my uh, 3 8 inch to 1 quarter inch adapter, my 3 8 inch, or excuse me, my 1 quarter inch drive socket, which is 1 half inch and 13 millimeters in size. Okay? And again, to uh, unscrew the nuts from the bolts, I want to turn the nuts counterclockwise or lefty loosey, okay? And with a ratchet wrench, depending on the position that you have this little switch in, uh, that will control what direction it's turned when you turn the handle. So right now, if I turn it this way, you can hear it click and it's not turning the socket. But when I turn it this way, there's no click. The little teeth inside are locking together and it's turning it clockwise. So in this position, it would tighten the nut. If I turn it back this way, it's gonna click when I bring it this way, and then it's gonna lock together and turn the socket when I turn it counterclockwise. So this is the position that I wanna have it in when I uh, loosen the nuts from the bolts, okay? So again, this is a ratchet wrench and it gets its name because of the ratcheting sound that it makes when you turn it in the uh, particular direction uh, opposite from uh, the driving direction. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is just wipe off, I'm gonna wipe off some of the excess oil that is on uh, these uh, nuts and the bolts to uh, reduce the chance of my tool slipping. 
So I'll go ahead and I'll use that rag and I'll uh, wipe off any excess oil here. All right, so now let me get my tools. I've got my ratchet wrench and I've got my combination wrench here and let's go ahead and try to take off the first bolt here that's down uh, near the bottom of the handle brace and I've got it propped up on uh, both of my shoes on either side so that it's a little bit above the ground so that I have clearance for the ratchet. And I think the fact that I've taken these off before and also uh, because I put the greaseless uh, lubricant in there, it's a lot easier to uh, remove them now. Okay, so I'll take this nut off. I'll get it and I'll put it in my little mayonnaise jar. All right, and then let's move down to the other ones here. Get the mayonnaise jar out of the way. And again, I want to turn the nuts, or the, uh, yeah, I want to turn the nuts counterclockwise or lefty loosey. All right, so let's see if these are just as easy. Yeah, so these are coming off fairly easy as well. And again, I think it's because I've taken them off before and I also put some of that uh, lubricant in there. Okay, so I can take that off the rest of the way, stick that one in the mayonnaise jar, and then we just have one more to go here. Oops, let's see here. So there we go, got the last nut off, and now I can take off the uh, broken piece of the handle brace. Now when I go to bolt the two handle braces back together, I can't do it while they're both on the ground and outside the lawnmower. Uh, and I'll show you why with this broken piece of uh, handle brace here. As you can see, the old handle brace, it cracked at one of the holes in the handle brace and that's just because of it constantly being flexed back and forth as I would push the mower so eventually it just got too fatigued and it cracked okay but the reason why I have to uh, bolt the two halves together um, while it's in the lawn mower is because of this as you can see the old handle brace has this little hole in the end and what I'm gonna have to do with the new one actually both of uh, the remaining handle braces as I'm going to have to slide them in that little slot right there and then that hole will fit over this little peg down there okay and that peg allows the handle assembly to pivot up and down depending on your height and your distance uh, from the lawnmower okay so it just that peg just allows you to pivot the handle assembly up and down but um, if I were to 
bolt both halves together before putting it in the lawnmower, I couldn't angle it so that I could uh, get it over the peg right here, okay? So what I'll have to do is I'll have to insert the uh, handle braces into the mower, put them over the pegs, and then bolt them together. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I have the two handle braces laid out on the ground behind the lawn mower. I have the three nuts in the mayonnaise jar down on the ground and what I'm going to try to do is first insert the handle braces into the lawn mower and slip the holes of the handle braces over those pegs that I showed you and then I'm going to try to bolt the two handle braces together to reassemble the handle assembly. Alright, so let's see how that's done. And it's going to be a little tricky to try to hold everything in place, I think. Alright, so I'll take the big section first and I'll slide it in the slot and let's see if we can get it over the peg there alright so that wasn't too bad and then I'll take the other piece the new handle brace I'll slide it into the slot and slide it over its peg alright and then I will try to put the two halves together here so we've got to get this little block put it in place Flip the bolt through there, line up the holes here, in fact I'll hold it with my leg and that'll make it a little bit easier I think. Okay, so I've got one of the bolts in place. And then I'll slide the other two into their corresponding holes. Okay. Now all I have to do is get the nuts. And I've got them in my little mayonnaise jar here. I'll dump them out. If they don't go too far, I'll start screwing them on their bolts here all right and you can feel that they they're on there kind of tight so I can't really turn them by hand uh, very far I can just get them started okay so let's get this other one started here the one on towards the bottom all right I'll put the screws for the cover plate back in the mayonnaise jar and put it aside And let's go ahead and start screwing these babies together. So I'll hold the nuts with my combination wrench and I'll start screwing them together with my ratchet wrench here. And I'll do it most of the way for each one, but I won't fully tighten them until I get them all pretty well positioned. Okay, and I'll move this, just this little mounting bracket here where the faceplate attaches to, and I'll tighten it up, tighten up its, up its, uh, I'll tighten up its bolt here. Okay, so now they're fairly straight and I think I can go ahead and tighten them up the rest of the way. And we don't want them too tight because we don't want to crush the tubes of the handle assembly here. 
and I'll tighten up the bottom bolt again the rest of the way. And there we go. I think that should do it. So now all that's left is to put the faceplate back on the handle assembly. Okay, so now all that's left to do is to reattach the faceplate here. All right, and I've got my nut driver here again, and I'll just use it to drive in uh, the self-tapping screws that I took out before. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this short one and put it in the bottom hole instead of the top hole. And, and I think uh, it'll have plenty of room uh, to uh, dig into uh, that bottom hole. Okay, and I won't have to worry about it uh, being long enough to dig into uh, the hole that's in between the two tubes of the handle assembly there. So let's go ahead and put the cover plate back on the handle assembly. Okay, so we'll just put it over the handles. Let's line up the holes. I'll put in uh, the screw that was in the top hole. I'll put it in the bottom hole here. And let me screw it in with my nut driver. Remember, righty tighty. So let's get it started there. And I'll just tighten it part way. And then I have the other screw in my mayonnaise jar here. And I'll start that by hand. Actually, we'll just have to let it bite in there. And again, turn it clockwise, or righty-tighty, to tighten it. And this you don't want to tighten too much, because you could break this screw as well. So we'll just tighten it a little bit to hold it in place, and then uh, we'll tighten the bottom one uh, as well. Okay, so there we go. Um, it looks like our uh, handle repair is complete. So let's go ahead and we'll test out the mower. Okay, so there we go. My real mower repair is complete, and I can finally mow the jungle outside my house. I'm Bobby Galuba with Ubatech.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something. Take care.